Blessings to your friend. This is Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to minister into your life each and every time we get this opportunity. I want you to share this, to call somebody, text somebody, let somebody know that this broadcast is on the air. You know, friend, we do not take for granted every opportunity we have to minister into your life. We know something will be said, something will be seen that will truly inspire you to continue to live for God. Stay tuned in. God has great things to get ready to minister into your heart. Whatever you don't pay attention to is what is flawed in your life. You can take that how you want to. Whatever you don't give attention to is where the flow is in your life. And the word of God said that when you give attention to this liberty, to this law of liberty, this perfect law of liberty, but don't just give attention to it, but be careful not to forget what you just gave attention to. This is the thing that brings the blessing in your life. If it bless you on Sunday, if you keep it in your mind, it'll bless you Monday through Saturday. Some of you came just for a touch. You don't need a touch. You need a lifestyle change. Hallelujah. God ain't condemning you because you forgot some things. But when God give you wisdom like now and tell you that the reason why you're forgetting it because you don't keep it before you, receive that wisdom. Every day I wake up, I'm going to keep God before me. I'm going to pray. Every day I get up, sometime that day, whether it's in the morning, whether it's at night, whether it's at lunchtime, I'm going to read some scripture to keep God before me. Amen. Glory to God. Why do they tell you not to text and drive? Because when your attention is on that phone, it's off the road. And when it's off the road, that's when wrecks happen. How many times have our life had wrecks in it? Because our attention is not on the road we're traveling. Look at somebody and say, you too good not to drive this road. Whoever look into the perfect law of living and continue, he being not a fuck. Get for here. Y'all ain't zoning me out over there, have you? Man, y'all ain't tuning me out. Y'all see I'm talking about here. Y'all stop here now. Y'all look at me like preacher's too hot for me. Well, let's cool it a little bit. He being not what? A forgetful, a forgetful, a forgetful here. Well, you can't make folks remember. Hmm. You can't make people remember. Why did God say he's going to write his laws in our hearts and in our minds? You ever, been you ever seen a stain get on something? When that stain comes, it don't matter how much it's washed, how much it go through, that stain is still there, ain't it? What God's going to do is stain our minds with something. No matter what tribulation, what trial, what persecution, what hell you face, that is still there. And sometimes we as humans, we let hurts get stuck in our mind more than we do the healing and the help get stuck in our mind. Some of us remember what happened to you as a kid that hurt you, and you don't remember what was preached last Sunday. It's a trick of the devil. How do you know? Because the thief come to steal. As soon as God sold something, here come that thief coming to steal that thing that was sown in your heart. The Bible said when the seeds were sown, that immediately Satan came in to steal that which was sown. Watch soon as church is out. Watch something try to steal your focus. Even while you're in here, watch something try to steal your focus. Watch soon as you pray about that thing, you feel a breakthrough. Watch something try to flare back up to steal your focus. Amen. God used somebody to prophesy God's going to heal you. Watch a doctor send a bad report after that. God said he's going to bless you financially. So watch a new bill pop up. Some got to try to steal your focus, but if your eye be single, your whole body be full of life. If you just stay focused on what God is saying. Hallelujah. I can feel sometime in my own life, in my own walk with God, when my mind is trying to drift off on other things. That's the moment, Sister Mika. I have to fast. I have to pray. I have to really start turning off televisions and phones and getting away from friends and saying, uh-uh, devil, I know what you're up to. I'm not ignorant to Satan devices. I have to get back focused. Amen. When a kid's grades start going down, what's the first thing you start paying attention to? What are you doing that's making you lose focus on your grades? 
especially when you know they're smart. And some of y'all got some intelligent kids in here. It's not that getting a C is wrong, but you know my child ain't no C student. Man, can I have some parents help me out? And sometimes you can see, look at their report. The first nine weeks, they got all A's. The second one, A's and B's. Then the next one, we didn't graduate into a C. And the first one, you say, why come you keep going down here? Amen. Ain't always the teacher fault. Uh, Miss Sharon, she won't move my seat. I get cold sometimes. When I get cold, I just fall asleep. No, it ain't. You was up there playing at the Xbox. Tell the truth. Stop lying on Sharon. Get off the PS5, you can get your work done. That's all the parents say. He's being not a forgetful here, but a doer. Oh, wait a minute. So there's work a here has got to do. Tell somebody, there's work a here I got to do. What work do I have to do? Now that I remember what God said, I have to do something with what God said. Sometimes we got to do something part, but we ain't got the hearing part. So we just got to do something. You're just working hard, but ain't working smart. Weighing yourself out, fasting and praying with no purpose. Going to church, I ain't missed the service, but you didn't miss instructions. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, you can bury me just a few minutes. You may not be jumping and shouting, but I know what I'm saying is still God. I'm not trying to entertain. I'm trying to get down that inner man. Oh, I sense such an anointing here, too. That's something you see. See, the enemy want to zone you out even now and make you think this word ain't for you. It is for you. God's trying to give you a wake-up call. There's things God's saying. There's things God desired in your life that he said, if you would just listen to me, I'll give you the answers to your every need. Glory to God. But a doer of the Work. Woo! Brother Harold, this is what makes me happy right here, brother. This man. Is that in your Bible? Man, if the devil was here, I'd give him a roundhouse. Share what? I don't sound so sad. Wait a minute. When I hear it and I do something with it, sister, now here come the blessing. So that takes away from, Lord, if you bless me, I'll be a blessing. What are you talking about? You blessed to even hear what God is saying. What did Jesus tell people? Blessed are your ears because of what they hear. Some of you don't, you ain't careful today. You think you just neandered in here. You think I just, oh, he just get on my nerve. Up there, all that screaming, yeah. And you don't even pay attention. You blessed to even hear what you're hearing right now. You blessed to even have the, the word of God being released on you. To have this grace, this anointing released on you. And the devil sometimes will want to make you second guess the blessing. But God is saying, if you would just hear what I'm saying, work with what I'm saying, then the blessing going to manifest itself. This person shall be blessed in all. Do you want every part of your life to be blessed? Man, I'm going to look. I don't even want to lose a teeth if it ain't for me to lose a teeth. I don't want to be a hundred years old and have good blessed teeth, Sister Shanika. I want to smile my way into the kingdom. And some of y'all that lost some years, the devil ain't losing no. <laughs> I'm going to go into heaven with pearly whites. Amen. Now I'm joking, but, but when you bless, people can see it. Look, I, I want to be healed. I want to be 100 and still can give God a shout. I know some of y'all don't care because you're 20 and still won't move. I want to have good health. I want my family blessed. I want my finances blessed. Man, when you got money, it just feel good. When you're broke, there's just certain pains hit your back that ain't supposed to be there. Amen. You think about going to the mailbox, you get depressed. What bill in the other day? Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I better get y'all out of here. We better go. What do I do as a hearer? I work with what God said. Why do I work with it? Because that's how the blessing is manifest. Look to somebody and say, I want you blessed. Come on, move fast. I'm going beyond my time. Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. I got Hebrews 2. Then I got one more place and we out of here. You know, always how deep you preach. Sometimes God's trying to give us a reminder of what we already know. Hear God's word. 
Hear what he's saying. Hebrews 2. Let's just start at verse number 1. Will you have a sound with you, Brother Stevenson? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest what? To what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I kill a sacred cow here? Can I kill a sacred cow? Yeah, thank you. One somebody let me kill. Let me kill a sacred cow here. Because this is what greed means. Sometimes people think I'm so missing God. Sometimes I hear for the one throw something at them. But I don't because I'm saved. I need a fresh word from God. No, you don't. I'll try over here. I need a fresh word. No, you don't. What you need to do is go back and take heed to those things. I'm going to take this to Texas. To the things you're, what is it in us that make us feel like I always need something new? And that's the spirit in sending. That's why we don't appreciate the old. Some of y'all want a new pastor. And God said, you don't appreciate the pastor you got. Wait for so-and-so to come to town. And missing me while I'm in town every week. Don't get quiet. You make me tell you stuff. Hallelujah. We ought to give the more. What is he? Attention. Notice. Amen. Man, you first got that car. Man, that thing was shining. You remember that black magic you put on the tires? Them tires was black as night in the country with no trees. Amen. Now the tires ashy. White car and turned tan. Leather seats look like pleather. Amen. Wendy's on the dashboard. McDonald's ketchup packets in the back. We won't even talk about the drink stains in the cup holder. Amen. And what you fail to realize is what you think is trash, somebody else will buy it from you, and it'll become their treasure. Hallelujah. You be careful what you get rid of because you don't see one good in it. Because it, what hurts my heart is some of you fail to realize that somebody gave up on you because they didn't see nothing good in you. But look at you now. God bought you with a price and said, I see the best in them. And that's how you got to be about God's word. Stop thinking last week's message wasn't for you. Stop thinking today's message ain't for you. I need some fresh. I need a new thing. No, you don't. You need what you're getting right now. And you ought to say, Lord, thank you for it. This is what will give me life. This is what will change my whole. This is what will change my heart. It's not that I got to control you. You giving me a word to control me. When prophet so-and-so come to town. We in Bishop, so us are going to do revival. God is here right now. Hallelujah. Have you did some of those last marriage messages? Amen. Have you ever learned how to catch Big Daddy and say, let's have a word of prayer? Since you need a fresh word. Amen. Did you ever go check out Victoria's Secrets? <clears throat> Since you need a fresh word, now let me talk to Facebook. Bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I buy you, man? Have you, have you learned to obey those things you've already heard? Oh, Lord, you know what season I am. And God said, I knew this season before you saw this season, and I told you with your old sanctified Christian self a long time ago what you needed before you got this. And don't you play that game on me like I'm missing the mark. No, I didn't hit that mark a long time ago, but you need to go back into your mind and your heart if you can't find it out, buy the CD and go back and remember what I said then because what I said then will help you now. Jesus spoke, I'm leaving because I know y'all tired of me. Jesus spoke down from, I'm sorry, was, 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 was coming up, and there was a voice that came down from heaven and said, you my beloved son who I'm well pleased in. And the very next chapter of his life, the devil came to him and said, if you be the son of God. Wait a minute. God already told him, you my beloved son who I'm well pleased in, before the devil ever showed up. But if he wasn't listening, he would never have been prepared for the trick. 
And there's tricks the devil's trying to get you in, telling you you sick, telling you you're going to die, telling you you defeated, trying to make you divorce in the home. And God is saying, I've already gave you the answer two or three weeks ago. Go back in your spiritual archives. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all done made me lie. I want to be gone. Can I say this because I feel God talking to me? Isaac didn't dig new wells. He went back and he opened up the wells Abraham had already dug. And there's a spirit in the land, especially on younger preachers, feel like I'm going to do something that's never been done before. And that's how pride and witchcraft set in. Because we're so worried about making a name for ourselves. You don't want to go back and reopen up what the devil didn't close that the past generation already opened up. Why come we don't preach holiness? Why come we don't see people getting filled with the Holy Ghost no more? You know why? Because this new thing, they said, we don't need a new thing. We need some folks to open up what God already did. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's raising up a generation even in here. Don't you discount yourself. We may be small in number, but we mighty in spirit. God's raising up some people in here, and he's raising up some people right here in North Little Rock that's saying, God, I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm going to that old landmark. You're not just using me to do a new thing. You're using me to do something you already did. I'm just going to do it in this generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. The earnestly to the thing which we had heard. Why? Why? Because I don't give attention to them. Look what he said. Less at any time. Less when you start having disagreements in the home. I ain't cooking because I'm mad. You know they're still eating. You better be glad there's kids in here. Because I really want to say some things, Mom. I'm going to take a strike. And I ain't talking about a match from the bedroom. Don't look at me funny. I ain't talking about sleeping. Because how dare you touch some of this? <laughs> After what you did to me. Thank you, sister. Oh, that's what I needed. And you sitting in church. Oh, speak, Lord. And God said, you heard me speak a long time ago. Take your big sanctified self in there and unbutton them clothes. You better be glad there's kids in here. And you seeking God so much. We get out that prayer sometime, leave some room for your hubby. I felt a shun down on that one, sister. Woo, I felt that one in my big toe, brother. Hallelujah. Look. I know you're married to God, but you got a natural ring on your finger, too. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all scared I'm going to stay there. I can tell you. I can feel it. I can feel it. Some of y'all scared I'm going to stay there. You move on. I ain't no move on now. You want to say it earlier? I'm going to stay for a while. I can feel that. Go on, go on, go on to the next verse. <laughs> Boy, that guilt set in there, but <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew, tough ball game. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Any more message you got to hear about that? Do benevolence. The Bible says, oh, Lord, the, cur the, the key is listening. I better keep it PG-13 at least. Some of y'all trying to rebuke me. See that pastor? I told you. You kids know what you be saying. <laughs> Let me say this, sister, cheering in here. The Bible said don't defraud can I get some help? See, if you got, even if you got, sometimes them turfles who ain't got no wisdom, that mess up your home. You praying so much, we can't never have a little rubby dub. You don't rubby dub, you don't get serious. <laughs> Amen. My dad had a dog that hit heat so bad. My, my dad said he kept building a fence for that dog. The dog jumped over the fence. The dog got a heat so bad, he built a fence and, and, and dug down deep before he knew it. He said he looked up, the dog still was over the fence some way. And he out there investigating. The dog realized he can't jump over the fence. He dug a hole so deep, he went under the fence. He found a way to get it done. Now, your kid's in here, but you better find a way. I'm getting back. That's all I'll say about that. I'll catch you on the marriage conference because we got enough nuns in church. <laughs> Y'all know what nuns is. I'm leaving. Y'all know what nuns is, don't you? You know what nuns is? 
They so devoted, you know. Very devoted. I mean, they just, it's God or nothing else. It's just God. It's just all I want is you, God. All I want is all you. You to be glorified. I mean, just a bunch of nuns. So every time your husband, you know, try to, you know, mess with you, he realizes that he can't get. <clears throat> All right. Therefore, <laughs> now I'm laughing and joking, but see, we skip over all that stuff like it ain't God. Why would God give you a family for you not to do something with your family? Look, I'm traveling today. I, I told you I'll be traveling more this year. But let me tell you something. I have to spend time doing something with those kids. Sometimes when I can't think of the hey, pull out some Uno cards. I don't care if we ride down the street, just look at each other. <laughs> Amen? We're going to do something together. Amen? I got to do something with my wife. I don't even like TV. I'll watch the old dull Lifetime movie just because I'm doing it with you. Stop awing, girl. Yes. <laughs> Amen. We try to perfect our relationship with God, and we ain't taking time to perfect our relationship with each other. You are not so holy, you don't need that human friendship for somebody. That's why God called us in the church, because he said we're many members, but we're one body. You got to stop looking at one another as the enemy and look at one another as being my fellow heirs in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Oh, since I went late, I might as well go late and give you some substance. All right. Hallelujah. He said, listen, any time we should let them what? Slip. Last verse, Revelation 3. Come on, we got to go. We got to go. When you want to get mad and say, Pastor, help me longer than what he said, remind yourself of how quiet you was when I was begging for amens. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Y'all should make me preach under this kind of pressure next week. Hallelujah. Man, when you start hearing this word and you start doing what you're supposed to do, you'd be in church, boy, you'd be, whew, you'd be so happy. But you know what, though? God loves you enough that even sometimes when correction comes, he loves you enough that he corrects you because he wants you to live a good life. That's why I love God. I love God because he ain't beating me up. He just giving me what I need. So to pray for me and my wife so we find that found of you too. <laughs> but the enemy really tried to affect your body. Do you know what I'm talking about? Now, I haven't talked to you. You haven't told me anything. Now, the wife, you haven't told me anything either. We didn't bring you here to try to pull one on you today. But God's going to bless you in your body because your body needs a healing and a miracle. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but you've been dealing with some in your body for so long, the enemy tried to make you just get used to it and try to make it become the normal. And uh, I looked at you while I was preaching. I looked at you right towards the end of my message here. And that song I was singing earlier about, uh, you're my healing Jesus, or what a healing Jesus, God brought that back to me. And he told me to tell you that he's a healing Jesus for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Stop out here with me if you don't mind. Oh, I wish I had some praying people here. Hallelujah. What a healing Jesus. God's going to move in your body, brother. You need God to do something from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You need God to do something in your body. And God's going to do it to build your faith up, too. Because you're a good-hearted man. You're a very good-hearted man. God's going to restore unto you the years that seem like been taken away from you. It's not like a... It's not like paralyzed, but it's like it's not full activity in some areas of your body. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're saying. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need some prayer warriors to stretch your hands towards this man. I hope I'm not embarrassed. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Glory. It's like in your hands. It's in your legs. It's like a whole side of your body as well. And I see the angel of the Lord going from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet today. And it's like the bucket of heaven is pouring out a refreshing over your life. And it's like this natural healing God's going to give you, going to even create a spiritual increase of faith in your life too. And God's going to straighten out some of your limbs. Where you're going to have full filling in your limbs. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, thank you, Lord. I wish I had some people that believe God here today. 
Now, I keep saying this because I feel a spectating spirit on some people. You haven't told me this. Glory to God. Father, I thank you it's done. I thank you it's so. It's like numbness at times. It's like you don't have full feeling in your body. Am I right or am I wrong? Hallelujah, Jesus. Stretch both of your hands out. Let's stretch them out. Where's wife? Come on, come on, wife. I believe the whole household going to get blessed here today. I know y'all thought y'all was going to church, but God brought y'all on a date with a miracle too. Hallelujah. Y'all catch hands real quick. Father, I pray for this man. I pray for his body. And I curse this spirit of infirmity that's trying to affect this body, God. Oh, Master, you don't reveal unless you want to heal. I speak against this spirit of infirmity now. In the name of Jesus. It's been for years on top of years. It's almost like you feel a decay taking place in your, in your body here. But God's going to refire you in your body, brother. It's like he's going to renew the youth of your body. Somebody give him praise out there. He's doing it for you because he loves you. Father, I pray for it now. I know it is so now. In the name of Jesus. You watch these next couple of days. It's going to be, you know, sometimes God gives me, it's going to be like a healing. It's like piece by piece, you're going to start noticing a difference. And actually, it's going to shock you almost. It's going to be like, man, it's totally different than what it was. God said, it shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus, it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for their home. I pray you cover them, God, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is so, it is so, it is so. In Jesus' name, we call it done by faith. In Jesus' name, we pray. Friend, I'm so thankful that you got a chance to hear the word of the Lord, to see the signs and wonders of God during this telecast. We prayerfully hope that this was not the last time that you stay connected with our ministry. Just like you was blessed during this broadcast, we truly believe that you will continually be blessed if you will continue to watch us each and every week on this same station at this same time. You know, friend, if you look on the screen, there's a number you can call. We want to pray with you for any prayer requests you may have. Anything you believe in God for, we want to connect our faith with you. And more importantly, if there's a lack of salvation in your life, if you feel far from God, we want you to understand that the purpose of our ministry is to build your faith and to have you walking closer with God. Feel free to go to the phone right now. You can go to our website as well. You can connect with us through social media. Don't let this be a one-time event. Stay connected with us as this is a God-given connection. And as we go off the air, we want to remind you of the love of God and the hope of Christ. Blessings to you on behalf of Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries.